Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, reviews of comics new and old, the history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Today onto a whim of a question that some of you may have asked and others may have just not, well, ever thought to ask it. So this is a thing that some people may never have even been concerned about and it's about Power Girl. Now there could be many questions about Power Girl. She's a character who has a muddled origin since Crisis on Infinite Earths. We have a decent amount to cover but before we do, I'm sad and you know what to do if you like this content and of course hit that like button subscribe so power girl who is she? Well, she debuted in All Star Comics number 58 in 1976 over on Earth 2, and she was an alternate universe version of Supergirl. Earth 2 was the first Earth introduced in the multiverse. In fact, it launches the multiverse, or rather, the story The Flash of Two Worlds does, which we've covered on this channel, so check it out. In that story, the Silver Age Flash, Barry Allen, vibrates his molecules in such a way that he ends up on Earth 2 and meets Jay Garrick, the first Flash from the first era of superheroes the Golden Age. This Earth, Earth 2, would become home to all of those heroes who had seemingly aged in tandem with the gap between the Golden and Silver Ages, so all of those first heroes were now older. And hence, this world would introduce a lot of legacy characters, the next generation, and one of those was Power Girl. Power Girl would also cause a bit of a stir over at Marvel because her name was so close to Power Man, these days for some more commonly known as Luke Cage. But this ruffled feathers over there for more more than that. Years prior, DC had made a stink about Wonder Man. This was back when Marvel had first introduced him, and this was because they had Wonder Woman. A lot of comics is about holding on to names and copyrights and trademarks. It's interesting. I'm not being sarcastic, it's fascinating. Lawsuits. Lawsuits everywhere. Stan Lee expressed his sentiments at the time, stating, I'm pretty annoyed about that. I've got to ask the Marvel lawyer. She's supposed to be starting a lawsuit about that, and I haven't heard anything. I don't like the idea. You know, years ago, we brought out Wonder Man, and DC DC Comics sued us because they had Wonder Woman. And I said, okay, I'll discontinue Wonder Man. And all of a sudden they've got Power Girl? Oh boy, how unfair. So the explanation given for her name as to why she's Power Girl and not anything else is as follows. It's said that she wanted to not be seen as derivative of her cousin Superman, and that they needed a similar adjective, like she couldn't be Neat Girl. Fun fact, Neat is a synonym for super. This is because of some older slang based etymology. So Power Girl would struggle with her origins because of Crisis on Infinite Earths, that 1985 event that compressed the multiverse all into one Earth. We're gonna hear about a lot because it changed a lot of things. That's why it keeps coming up. Here's the thing. She survived, but Supergirl from Earth-1 did not. Earth-1 was the main Earth. Supergirl was killed because the mindset at the time was that Superman's supporting cast was too big. And how was he supposed to be the last Kryptonian alive when he pretty much had a whole Kryptonian family on Earth, even a dog? And so Supergirl was killed, but not Power Girl. But now she had to have a new origin to explain her existence, which was a harder sell because she'd been around since 1976. So she was recognizable as alternate Supergirl, which she would also eventually be again, but that's not why we're here. There's always been one pretty big difference between Supergirl and Power Girl. I mean, there are a couple. There's also personality-based differences, but this is the one that a lot of people notice. It's the boobs. Power Girl has become known for having a massive bosom and a costume with a chest window that highlights them. Side note, for a time DC tried a parody character called Power Boy. He had a similar costume, but the joke never really worked because because there were different connotations, different expectations, and then he got into an abusive relationship with Supergirl, and the chest window was the last thing people were thinking about. So some fans have wondered, vis-a-vis -vis this bosom question, why did it happen? Was there a reason? And actually, yes there was, but it's probably not what you think. If you go back to Power Girl's early appearances, she is bountiful, yes, but nowhere near what she would become. So what happened? Enter artist Wallace Wood, or Wally Wood, or Woody. He was an artist who bounced a lot from place to place, would end up doing a lot of filler art, lots of little things, lots of side magazines, gentlemen's magazines. Gentlemen. It varied in the level of gentlemen. There was hardcore gentlemen and then softcore gentlemen. He also had a decent stint at EC Comics with the horror and sci-fi, but with the censorship that launched the Silver Age and ultimately killed EC, those gigs dried up. So you would often find him 
himself doing little things here and there, working for other bigger, better known names, not always for the most pay. He was also known for doing satire work and having a defined sense of humor. And a lot of the times he was on the raunchier side too. Fun fact, in protest of what he viewed as stringent Disney copyright, he made what is now a famous piece that I um, I cannot show you. And if you have little ones watching with you, cover their ears. It was called Disneyland Memorial Orgy. So if you really want to see it, go look it up. I can say that I'm a changed person. I've, I've seen things. It's a work of art in and of itself. It's like one of those paintings of hell that you look at where there's a different thing going on in each corner so you can just stare at it and the more you look at it, the more you see. It's, it's one of those. And everything is going on. I mean everything. If you can, if you're, if you're imagining it, it's probably on this poster. Woody was said to be troubled by his compatriots, and he seemed to develop a bitterness towards the comic book industry as time went on. In his later working years, he was quoted as saying, never draw anything you can copy, never copy anything you can trace, never trace anything you can cut out and paste up. Actually, that was a note that he had cut up for himself. So yikes. So Wood was convinced that nobody actually was paying attention to him or anything that he did. He also felt that they probably didn't really care about his work. So having that bit of a raunchier sense of humor and being willing to push the envelope, he wondered what if every issue he just started drawing her breasts a little bigger. Just, you know, see how big they could go before anybody noticed. And as you can see, it took it took a few issues for people to notice. Jimmy Palmiotti, who would write a Power Girl series in 2009, described it thusly. Okay, when the character was created, Wally Wood was the artist that drew Power Girl, and he was convinced that the editors were not paying attention to anything he did. So his inker said, every issue, I'm gonna draw the tits bigger until they notice. It took about seven or eight issues before anyone was like, hey, what's with the tits? And that's where they stopped. True story. Now this may seem like a smaller comic book history occurrence, but Power Girl's breasts and costume have become topics of huge discussion. Writers have addressed it seriously and jokingly. There have been people both for and against the breasts and the costume. It has become a topic of feminist debate. There have been intense discussions whenever they decide to cover the boob window. Should it stay open or should it be closed? You can make solid arguments for both. Power Girl has expressed her sentiments about it in various stories, though of course this tends to be tinged with a bit of the writer's opinion and some of the opinion of the time. So it's not always consistent. For a time, she had a really core idea of how she felt about it, but that's shifted a bit. Let me give you some of the feelings. In 1992, she described her costume like this. It shows what I am, female, healthy. If men want to degrade themselves by staring, that's their problem. I'm not gonna apologize for it. But in 2005, the explanation was this. The first time I made this costume, I wanted to have a symbol like you. She's talking to Superman. I just, I couldn't think of anything. I thought eventually I'd figure it out and close the hole, but I haven't. In her Wonder Woman run, Gail Simone had Black Canary describe the bosom as a national treasure. So in short, people have thoughts and feelings about this. All cause somebody felt their work was going unnoticed and unappreciated. So now you know, if you were ever wondering in the first place. I'm not gonna lie, I was wondering. I wonder about a lot of things. Is this something that concerns you? Do you feel that the bosom is exploitative? Or do you feel like all different shapes welcome and not everybody needs to look the same, but that means that some people are gonna have ample endowments. Are you pro boob window or anti boob window? Answering the deep questions here today on Casually Comics. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Please do all of the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. And we'll see you again soon. Who knows what we're gonna talk about. That's why you gotta subscribe. Bye-bye.